What's up, everybody? You know what time it is. And today, we're talking about the Black Eyed Children. Let's get into this. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, We're a couple idiots. Yeah, with these intros, man. Joe can't keep his shit together. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. Uh, anyway, welcome to the Horror Chronicles podcast, guys. I'm your host, Ryan, and with me, as always... JT. JT's in the house. Oh, we're trying to get our stuff together. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're trying. And as you've seen in the intro, we are talking about the black eyed kids, children. I mean, whatever your preference is, I guess. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've got the wrong notes. I thought you said the black eyed peas. <laughs> That came up every time I every time I went in to type in information. Black eyed peas is the first. As soon as I put in black eyes, like peas? No, no, I want to talk about no. black eyed peas, man. Uh, Cause I got a feeling. Oh yeah, don't. <laughs> it's no. not that type of podcast. No. no. Uh, anyway, so. But anyway, here we are. Yes, and uh, uh, the, happy to be here. Again, having a good time as usual. Yes, we are having a great time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of these bloopers, we're gonna have to put together a yeah, whole collage sure. of the pre. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just I just forced my wife to watch uh, Village of the Damned. Oh, that's a good And one. she's like, "Are you guys covering that tonight?" I said, "No, we're doing the Black Eyed Kids, but uh, close enough." But it's it's kind of in that same realm. That's a good movie, man. <laughs> it we, is. We actually it talked is. about that on our. Yeah. On one of our podcasts, we were talking about that because my wife loves that movie. Yeah, it was it was funny because I'm watching it, and as I'm watching this movie, I'm seeing all these people that were in They Live. Oh, I know. You know, <laughs> I noticed the same that movie. You know, it's I was like, watching. I can't remember why I was watching a movie on YouTube the other day. And I was like, wow, look at all these actors have been in the same movies. Yeah. You yeah. know, but I mean, if it works, happens a lot, I mean, well, you know, like directors, they they like to work with certain people. Yeah, I mean, if don't ain't broke, don't fix it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, guys, we're going to get jump into this. Um, Sorry, I was picking my ear. This is a super creepy um, story, legend, uh, whatever you want to call it. There's, I mean, it's not really a story because it's every multiple stories. It's, uh, it is. You know, it's there's, stories, personal stories. Yeah. Um, but I, it's, it's a super creepy concept, and it's something that I really like. I was excited when we were talking about doing this one. I was like, man, that's awesome. Cause a lot of people haven't heard of them. Which is I, weird. You know, yeah, I, I kind of thought it was weird. Well, and then once I, once I got into it and start, really started looking at some of the stuff, there's a ton of stories out there, but it's, it's really weird. It's like they coined the phrase just here recently. Recent, fairly recently, know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what's this? I guess we wouldn't start at. You want to start at the very beginning? Or you want to go ahead and. Well, I just want to have fun. So. Oh, well. You know, girls just want to have fun. <laughs> so. Okay, well, uh, let's say. Talking, so, up, talking about how it got coined. Supposed, you know, the coining of the. Flip it a coin. Flip it a coin. Um, I guess we'll say that the legend of the black eyed kids or that phrase came about in 96. Yes, yes. And it was from a reporter um, named Brian Bethel. Bethel. I guess is how you would yeah. say it. Yeah, he was from uh, Ab- Abilene, Texas. And um, he actually himself had uh, an encounter, or whatever yeah, you want to call it, experience encounter, yeah. with with the. Yeah. So after and it that, was funny because he he actually submitted an email mm-hmm. to. <clears throat> A, a friend or something and somehow it got leaked out and that's how the story got, you know kind of blew up on the internet uh you know when we talk about 1996 you know this guy basically this is the first occurrence of the story on the internet yeah and uh, yeah, yeah yeah and i mean he actually found another story from a guy who lived in uh portland oregon mm-hmm and he put those out on the internet, and that's when, like you said, it yeah. spread worldwide of right. the black eyed kids, as they called them. Right. I've always known of them as the black eyed children. Yeah. Um, uh, some people refer to them as BEKs. Yeah, so I mean, I. Um, if you didn't put that together, it's black eyed kids. Yeah, not, not peace. Uh, anyway. Or king. 
We you know we say that we say that uh, we're surprised that not every, a lot of people heard them, but really, I mean, I guess we're never not, surprised anymore. <laughs> if you're not in our world, yeah, then I guess you know a lot of things you haven't heard of. But um, uh, this one is awesome. Uh, this is a very creepy. I just every story I ran across was just. Yeah, we're we're gonna get into a creepy. few. Sto- we're getting to a few stories and creepy. stuff. Uh, but basically, the whole <laughs> the gist of it is. Is that I mean you could be driving down a road. They say they like to be on roads and come to your houses. Right. right. And um, basically, you will see these kids or whatever, some ranging from ages, usually six to sixteen. Yeah, yeah, that's what um, I ran across too. And they're you know they're usually wearing clothing that. Is it's it, not really right for the time. Yeah, or, you know, it's not right for the time. They're so. kind of. You know, they were talking about a lot of these occurrences that that I read about. These kids were wearing hoodies, yeah. And you know, which hoodies are a big thing now. Yeah. But you know, I don't know why the hoodie thing. I don't. Yeah, I, don't I would assume to cover up the face. Maybe, maybe. So they keep their head down maybe. and cover the face up yeah. and stuff. Um, but uh, just a couple books. I want to give you guys some. Re- if, if you haven't heard of them and you want to kind of dig into it. And you like to read, there's a couple books that I just picked out that I thought you would want to read. Uh, one is actually called Black Eyed Children by uh, Sarah Clancy. Um, oh, Miss Clancy. Miss Clancy. And um, there's another one called the, the Chilling Story of the Black Eyed Kids. And that is by G. Michael Vassy. Um, those are two of the ones I ran across that I, I thought you guys would get some good information out of. If you haven't got dug into this and you want to read about it. Yeah. There's also mm-hmm. another really good book called Black Eyed Children from a guy named David Weatherly. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Weatherly was like one of the biggest investigators of this whole black eyed children phenomenon, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it uh you know, I um talking about um Bethel. You know, he also went on, um, there was a TV show out in 2012 called uh, Monsters, what was it, Monsters and Mysteries in, in America. And he went on there and told the story about yeah. the two original stories that went out on in 96. Well, uh, I mean, let's tell his story. I mean, Yeah, I mean, go ahead. It, to, oh, he's going to throw this on me. If you want to jump All into right. it. All right. <laughs> well, I'll tell the story. So this, uh, this Brian Bethel guy... Uh, I'm going to give you the condensed, yeah. unsweetened version of this. He uh, he was traveling down the road. Uh, he pulled into a parking lot. He It was funny. He actually said that he was going to pay his internet bill, yeah. of all things. <laughs> so he pulled into a parking lot that was close to a theater, and he was sitting in this parking lot in his, in his car, had the windows up, and he was in there writing a check because he's going to drop it off at the internet company. Um, Well, then all of a sudden he hears a tapping on his window, and when he looks up, there's these two kids standing outside his, I mean, right outside his window. Licking it. uh, And they they were were window lickers. Uh, They were standing right outside his window, um, and they were wearing hoodies, and they were, their faces were shadowed, and he couldn't really see them too well. <clears throat> but uh, he uh, he thought, oh man, there's uh, you know something up with these kids. You know they must need help, help. or something like mm-hmm. that. So he kind of cracks the window, rolls the window down a little bit, and he says uh, says, hey, you, you know, you guys need some help, and and they were like, oh, we need we need a ride home. Can you give us a ride home? Uh, we need to get some money to go see a movie. And the guy was like, oh, okay. He said, well, what movie are you going to see? Well, it was 1996. They wanted to go see Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! So, so he was like, oh, okay, well, it sounded a little weird, you know. And, and he could see the theater marquee from where he was sitting. And he looked up, and he saw, the, saw that Mortal Kombat was playing at the theater. And he looked at the time on it. And then he looked at the clock in his car, and he's like, you know they're, al- they're already an hour into this movie. Yeah. You know what's up with these kids? And 
And they're like, no, really, we need a ride home to get some money so that we can go see this movie, and you're going to give us a ride home. And, uh, you know, they kind of banter back and forth, and, and finally the kid looks up at him, and he notices when the kid looks at him, his eyes are pitch black. There's no white in them. It looks like the entire thing is just a solid black mass. Yeah. And that's when he really freaked out. And you know what's crazy? <clears throat> like, some of these stories differ as far as, like, uh, the amount that they actually talk. Yeah. Some of them yeah. don't speak at all. Yeah. yeah. They just stare. And actually, some of them, they say, kind of people felt like um, they talked to him telepathically almost. Right. Um, but... Well, and a lot of them, what I was getting out of it is, like, these people that, when they were confronted by these black-eyed kids, that they felt like a loss of control. All like of them. They, uh, every one of them. Every, it's like they couldn't... They were in, like, a trance-like state. Well, or, yeah, and... Um, I can't remember which story it was, but they were talking about how they, he was trying, a um, guy was trying to get to the window to roll the window up. Um, there was a guy, well, I don't want to jump ahead of your story. No, no. I, I mean, I was pretty much done. Yeah. I mean, he, um, well, know. there was a guy and he was traveling down, you know, yeah. traveling down the road and he uh, had seen these um, kids walking or whatever. Well, he, he, he was, I mean, this is, I can't remember what the time was, but it was old, way a little older back in the day, whenever you didn't have much on the roads. You know, there wasn't right. much on the side roads. So is, this, is this the one from Utah? I think so. Uh, yeah, because I've got that wrote down. And he pulls over, and um, he's trying to, like, he's just sleeping in his, in his ride, and he notices these two kids kind of appear out of nowhere. So he rolls his window down, and try to to try to hear like yeah, them. Maybe I didn't write that one. To down. hear them coming, and to uh, kind of see if they need help or something because right. they're in the middle of nowhere. Right. Where do these yeah. kids come yeah. from? You know, he's pulled yeah. over taking a nap in his car. So. Yeah, and it's like the middle of the night. Yeah, one o'clock. I, mean, I think he says one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's, and um, anyway, what the hell are these damn kids doing out here? Yeah, time? he rolls the window down so we can try to hear, and then he also shouts out to him, "Hey, do you guys need some help?" You know, and they say, uh, yes, please. And as, they, as they're talking, they're continually walking closer and closer. Yeah. Well, as they get closer and closer, he feels this, like, and every person who has a, who has a encounter with the black children or kids. Um, or the black eyed peas for that. Yeah, matter. it's probably, I mean, I know if I seen Fergie, I'd be, well, I'd, I would. I'd, I'd be probably, in a trance-like state. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, they get this feeling of this overwhelming a wave of anxiety and like at first and then um you get real tired and um like this gentleman i was talking about he rolled his windows down and he was talking to the kids trying to ask him what was going on you know and as they got closer he felt more and more like he had lost like not that he lost control but like that his hands were and his body was like moving he couldn't real move. he was like he, almost paralyzed paralyzed yeah. almost. like you know yeah. like when your hand falls asleep and you try to like move it and then you try to grab something. it's like that but he manages to work his way they call that a stranger yes the stranger oh. <laughs> that he he managed to get his work his way to the window thing and roll it up before they got to it and they were just kept um, talking to him through the window, telling him they had to let him in, had to let him in. And that's one thing about the black eyed children that you're going to get is they want to yeah. get you into a confined area. Or, the, or they want to get into your house, your, your house or a vehicle. They usually want to try to get, they, they need to come in, you yeah. know, to somewhere. Yeah. A lot of the stories I ran into, they were wanting to use a phone, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, um, I think that's a, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I was just gonna. Uh, I, I think we're talking about the same story, and I kind of got into an article about people who had tried to fight these things off. Yeah, yeah, I read some stuff. Um, on and one of them was was a guy in Utah, and he was on the side of the road, and somehow when he was rolling up his window, his sleeve kind of floated out the window a little bit, and the kid got a hold of it. 
Oh, dude, and was pulling on so this angry. was pulling on this guy's sleeve, and all he could think of is, "I got to get away from here. I got to get out of here." So he kind of pushed the kid back and got his window rolled up. And he said, whenever he looked up and looked out the windshield, this kid's standing right in front of his car. Yeah. And like he's trying to block him from going anywhere. So the guy just hammered down and hit this kid. Yeah, and and. He said, "What after after he drove, he the kid bounced off the bumper of his car, and he's like, you know, I wasn't going that fast, so I mean, I probably didn't hurt him that much, but it had to have hurt him some. But he said, when I looked in my rearview mirror, this kid just stood up off the ground and just brushed himself off like nothing had happened, like Michael Myers, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, there's another story I, I had read about. Um, there's a gentleman who." was uh it was it was probably like around 10 30 11 o'clock at night or whatever and um he was gonna walk to the he was walking to the store or whatever to get something whatever it may be probably a loaf of bread and a stick of butter stick of butter (laughs) and uh as he was walking um he noticed across the street that there was these two kids knocking on his neighbor's door but the neighbor wouldn't open the door let him in so he continues walking but as he continues walking he notices these kids well oh they knock on the door he sees they're not letting him in the kids turn around they see him they look at him he can't see their faces because the uh the shadow the shadow so he continues walking well he turns around and he notices they're following him so you know picture it you're walking down a sidewalk. There's street lights. Every whatever, you yeah. know, so many feet. He sees them coming. Yeah. Darkness, so, light. Yeah. Darkness, light. So yeah. he's going, and he's just trying to make his way to uh, the store. So he takes off running. He's like, I gotta get. So he takes off running. Right. He makes it to the store. Busts in the store, buys stuff, and he's he's talking to the, the uh, store clerk, and he's telling him what happened on the way there. And the store clerk's like, wow, yeah, that happened. Um, the same thing happened not too long ago, I think last year, to somebody. Wow. And they're talking about it. Well, they turn around, and the kids are standing outside the door of the of the store, right? They're knocking on the door, asking for asking to come in. Mm-hmm. So they have, evidently they had to have permission to come in. Right. Um, which is kind of weird. <gasps> oh, I'll get into that. I thought he farted. I just, <laughs> my brain did. My brain did. Everybody write it down. Uh, but he, uh, he, uh, he was talking to the clerk, and he said, there, he's like, don't let him in, don't let him in. Well, they started getting aggressive with it, pounding on the door and wanting to get in. So they, he, the clerk grabs a guy and takes him out the back door. They both split. He locks the door, splits. Well, mm-hmm. as I'm going the way out, the one of them comes around the corner as they're going out. Well, talking about a struggle, he gets knocked to the ground. And he turn, He gets up off the ground, and he sees the clerk fighting with these two things. So he manages to grab the clerk like by the collar like this and jerks him away from them. They fall down as he falls down there, and they take right. off running, and they get away. He don't know what happened to the clerk for sure, but he got away and the clerk was gone too. So, but yeah, he, this apparently is, he didn't care about the clerk. But something, but something we were talking about that I noticed. I don't about, have to run fast. I just have to run faster than you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, yeah, exactly. But something I noticed that like uh, gets brought up in a lot of different conversations when it comes to evil or just people doing bad things or whatever is that they either a need permit. It, they need to let you know what they're doing to kind of put it out there. Excuse me, sir. Can I come inside and talk to you about murdering? Steal your soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, or they have to have permission. It's yeah. almost like they have to have permission to do certain things. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it's... Um, what else has to have permission? Vampires. To get in your crib. We'll get back to that. <laughs> yeah. We'll get back well, to yeah, that. because in some of these <clears> stories, <throat> I don't know if you have it, if you have it written down, but um, I've got all kinds of stuff. Well, but. what I was going to say is, 
a lot of these stories, if they manage to get in the house, they usually end by, okay, you probably had this written down. There's a lady in Virginia. I think it was Virginia. Her and her husband. Her and her husband. Yes, yes. Great story. Great yeah. story. Well, they're, you know, they're sitting at home one night, and uh, they get a knock on the door. So they go to the door, and there's these two kids there. I believe one's a girl and one's a boy. Mm-hmm. And um, they're probably like around 13 or 14 years old. And ask if they could use the phone. Well, she's kind of like iffy at first about it, right. which everyone is. But then her husband was like, well, let him in. It's, you know, it's kind of cold. They weren't dressed for the weather. It was kind of right. cold out. So they let him in. Uh, they let him in. She goes into the kitchen to make them some hot cocoa and stuff, you know. And he, the, the dad goes into the living room with the kids. Well, she's doing her thing, making that. She comes out, and uh, her husband is sitting, like, with his hands in his face like this, head like this, and he's like, man, I'm feeling dizzy. And um, she's like, oh, hands the, hands the cocoa to the kids, and then goes over. And I don't know why they haven't noticed that their eyes are black yet. Well, so. they hadn't ever looked up. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. So this whole time they're in there, they're these looking creepy-ass at the, kids are looking, looking down like floor, this. You know? So picture that. Yeah. And then um, her husband's nose starts bleeding. And then the electricity goes out. And they're freaking out a little bit or whatever. Well, then they hear these kids. The electricity comes back on. They lift up their face and they look at them. And they see their eyes are black. Like pitch black. And they say, our parents are here. Yeah, well, our parents are coming is what they said. Because they wanted to go use the bathroom, mm. and uh, yep, so the the mom the mom shows them where the bathroom is. So they go down the hall to the bathroom, and uh, she goes in to talk to her husband. And, and actually, she notices his she nose. notices his nose is bleeding. And then the electricity goes out when they're in the bathroom. Right. Well, and then they come out of the bathroom, and she meets them in the hallway, and they tell her, "Oh, our parents are here." And they walk up to the front door, they open the front door and walk out and don't close the door. And the mom's standing there in the hallway and she can see out the door. And at the end of the walkway, there a black car pulls up and there are two uh, figures in black that look like men mm-hmm. standing outside the car. And these kids walk out to these men and they all get in the car and the men are staring at the house as they're getting into the car. And they get in the car and they drive away. Yeah, but the story don't end there. No, no. Um, a year later, right? Uh, yeah, something a, like that. A year I, later, yeah. uh, her husband gets a form of skin cancer, basically. Yeah, a, a lethal form of skin, skin cancer. cancer. And he suffers from nosebleeds and stuff Constantly. all the time, which she said he never got nosebleeds before. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, it's a... Uh, it's rare that you get stories of people who actually let them yeah, in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because usually people panic and don't let them in. Well, man, think about it. <clears throat> Some there's, If you're walking to my porch, I'm going to see your face. I turn the light you on. You want to see my face? I want to see your face. Even if I have to have it lit up by the end of my shotgun with a flashlight on it. <laughs> with a flash from the muzzle. I'm going to see your face one way or another. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean... It's just super creepy. I think, to be honest with you, it's gonna be. It would be way creepier if it was a story where you're driving down the side road. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting in, you know, like that guy that was sitting. We've in got some vehicle. of those. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a ton of them. Yeah. There's a ton of stories out there. I personally have never seen anything like that. You know, um, I've seen some crazy satanic worshiper stuff. Yeah. Which I say satanic worship, I don't know. Because to be honest with you, I heard a really good story you need to listen to that you probably like a lot um, from a great podcast. I already mentioned it last week. Oh, which by the way, guys, we're going to be doing another suggestion video probably this week. Um, mm. Come, so look for that. And um, Got some goodies. <clears throat> yeah. Last week, we talked about... Uh, we were talking about... Um, 
Well, uh, I don't know if I talked about that or not. I might want to save that one. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. But anyway, where was I at? I was going into... Uh, uh, talking about a podcast of some sort. Yes, we talked... We're okay. lost. Last week, we talked about um, you think scary we're stories. Now, wait till we rewind a little bit here. <laughs> scary stories tell them dark. Yes, yes. And um, they had a really good two-part story. <laughs> I ain't your grandpa. <laughs> yeah. They had a really... He read a really good two-part story. I'll send it to you about Heaven's Gate... Or Heaven... Was it Heavensville? Mm-hmm. And it's about Satan and God, but it's, it, dude, it's crazy awesome. Okay, cool. Really yeah, good story, yeah. and there's a two part story. Yeah. It's it's it really good. But anyway, um, I'll send I'll send you that link or whatever because yeah. you got to watch that. But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as getting into the the creep the creepiness of that, you know, I've seen some weird shit i don't know if you would call them satanic worshipers or whatever you know people dressed up in ropes or whatever burning burning shit down yeah. there and stuff like that whatever i don't care it doesn't bother me i can i can handle myself and i'm good but um something like this you know it's like you said like you said about the new um the new la lorena movie yeah yeah you know, if you have kids. Very creepy. If you guys haven't seen that movie, it was really good. I haven't seen it yet. Really good. I'm pissed off about it. I'm going to watch yeah, it. But he fucking blew me off. So. <laughs> He's mad because I, anyway. <laughs> I didn't. But anyway. Uh, I wanted to pull up Paul Rubens on the, no, no, wait, <laughs> wait. Wrong theater. Uh, um, no, if you have kids, it's kind of creepier. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know. Uh, I don't have any kids, and if some kids walk up on my porch right now, I'm going to be pretty hesitant. Yeah. Even if they're your kids, I'm going to be like, uh, what are you little bastards doing out here? Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> you better be worried if my kids are coming out here. Especially, I'm like, not opening this door for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, who's going to let these people in, man? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I say that, but there's a lot of people out there who are just not self-aware. Yeah. You know? Um. This is creepy as shit to me. I mean, I just picture it. Is. It is. You know is. what I mean? Like the story we just told. And, and we're going to get creepier here in a minute. The whole time these kids are inside this lady's house, they're just looking down like this. Yeah. And they're talking to them like this, and you can't see the... No, I want to see some fucking eye contact. Yeah. I need some eyes. I want My to... eyes are up here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, eyes up here. <laughs> but yeah, so soup. Uh, this shit creeps me out, man. Bad. Like, it would be so... Cr- I say that, but I want it to happen to me. <laughs> Again, yeah. I want to see this shit. Um, okay, Go I want to. I want to rewind just a little bit. Now that we've kind of tickled your curiosity, hey, 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 uh, we're gonna. I kind of want to get into some some more information about how this started and what's been going on and some of the stuff. I don't know. You may or may not have found, but uh, so we already ta- told you about Brian Bethel. Um, you know, put out this feed, 1996. Well, this author, David Weatherly, uh, came across this, heard about it, and he decided that he was going to start doing some research on this. And he became one of the biggest uh, black-eyed children researcher uh, ever. Um, his, his big goal when he wrote when he wrote the book, Black Eyed Children, he went out and he did as much resource gathering and investigating as he could. Um, but his goal when he wrote that was he wanted to make, he wanted to know, do these black eyed kid sightings predate the internet? And they do. Yeah. They do. Um, one of the, one of the first stories that I heard, that I read from this guy uh, was he had basically he had talked about an article he had read and it was from the NICAP, which is the Nas- National Investigators Committee of uh, Aerial Phenomena. Okay. Jeez, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> way, way, way. Um, but anyway, this was in 1974. In, I don't know how to say this, Aisne, France. Um, basically, it was a story about these two guys. They were driving in a car, 
down a road and as they drove past this courtyard uh, in France they have these courtyards and then you'll have like several houses around the courtyard where you mm -hmm. can pull into and then you know you have several neighbors or whatever so as they're driving by they notice these these five figures in black uh, in this courtyard and so they kind of pull up and slow down and the 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 one guy rolls his window down to try and get a better look and what he notices is, is there are there are three figures in black toward off in the distance there's another figure in black over to the side and then there's a, a and then there's one standing in the middle of the courtyard and what's weird about it is he noticed that all five were wearing the same like floor or yeah I, I guess floor length black robes with like colored dots all over them they all had the same uh, dark long straight hair that went to their waist um, and he said that they looked like they had like yellowish skin um, jaundice <laughs> jaundice maybe uh, but uh, he said as they as he rolled down the window because he was gonna gonna ask them you know what they needed the one in the center turned around and looked at them and when it did he noticed that its eyes were solid black and then all the other ones turned to look and the one in the center started waving at him like trying to get him to come to him uh, and the way they described their eyes uh, so he, here's how they described them they they were wearing black robes they had long dark hair their noses seemed to be compressed inwards and their eyes were described as enormous solid black hemispheres the size of billiard balls. Yeah, that's when I'd be pulling out my... So the, the guy kind of got freaked out and he took off. Uh, he got, his, got the other guy to, you know, that was driving. Uh -huh. He's like, get out of here, go, go, go. And these things started screaming at them. It was like some sort of wail or whatever as they're going off in the distance. And as he Fuck watched yeah. them, they stayed in that courtyard. They didn't follow them out. Mm -hmm. So, the, it, and that was a case that was done by this, you know, this paranormal committee. Uh, and that was in 1974. Shoot, dude. I know it's 74, but if it was now, I'd be pulling out my black figure with 30 rounds in the magazine and just yeah. well, uploading in them sons of bitches. I, so mm -mm. the way I wrote cool this shit, down though. is we all think about the Black Eyed Kids story as being a new story, a new urban legend, circa 1996. Uh-huh. Well, as I go on, I'm going to get farther back in time. Um, if I could turn so, back <laughs> do, do, do. Come on, sing it, Cher. If I can find my way. <laughs> get it, get it. Um, so this next story I'm going to tell you about is a, is a story called Harold's Encounter. Um, Harold was a, a young, I, I guess young man, he was 16 years old, uh, lived in Virginia in the 1950s. Lived in a small town, everybody knew everybody in this town. So one day he's walking home, and as he's walking by, there is this little boy like leaning over a fence and he saw this boy and he thought you know i've never seen this kid before i mean who is this kid where did he come from uh. you know um well this kid just said to him i want to go to your house take me to your house was is what this kid said to him was there a goat involved and, and he's no, no. <laughs> Knowing the kid didn't have his head in the fence either. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, so this Harold kid, you know, was like, oh, you know, I don't know, you know, and was kind of leery about it. And, oh, yeah, no shit. And uh, <laughs> this, this boy is like, I want to go to your house. Take me to your house. <laughs> and uh, 
Harold <laughs> Harold's like, oh, you know, but I mean, I'm I'm sure he was like, fuck this, I'm out of here. Aggressive you know? little fucking bad um, So so Harold took off running, and as he took off running, this kid said to him, "Now don't you run away from me. You're gonna walk me to your house." See, that's so funny. Uh, and so, as Harold ran from this kid, he could hear this kid start screaming, and he described it as a, a wail that sounded like it came from like a bobcat or something. Mm-hmm. And he took off running, uh, and you know what? What was it that was screaming? Was it a bobcat, or was it this? Little boy at the fence. Don't know. What was this Nobody kid ever the fence doing to a bobcat? No. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why I was screaming. Uh, but I, nobody knows. Nobody saw this little boy again. You know. See, and that's something that sucks, kind of, because there's no like um, reoccurring story about the same place. Well, Where sometimes there are. Like you were talking earlier about how people had claimed that, oh yeah, we've seen them, you know. Yeah, yeah, but I, but it's it's never well. And what's weird is, is it's not just one particular place. Well, you know, you know, that's it, what I'm it's saying. It's all over the world. That's I mean, a, we've told you stories about France, Virginia, Portland. See, and that's what I'm saying. I, it's not like you can go investigate. Abilene, Texas. I mean, it's all over. It's not like you can go investigate. Like a haunted right. house, you know, right. which sucks because, like, I would love to be able to go out and investigate this. All you can do is get stories. And hope you get lucky enough to see one. Yeah, and one happens to you. Lucky or not, however you want to see it, yeah. I still want to see the shit. But. Oh, if, I would, too. I'd be very interested. That's what sucks is that you can't, run you can't go and in, in, investigate yeah. it, you know, yeah. which is crappy. But, you know, it is it what is. it is. It is. I don't want to wish anything bad. Because I have kids, so, yeah. you know, I, however, if it's just me, I want to see something, you know? Yeah. And it sucks that I can't go out and investigate that. Because, guys, down the road, not to jump off on a tangent too much, because I know you're in a, on a roll here. Uh, just call me butter. Yeah. We're going to get to be doing videos and investigations and stuff like that down the road. Um, going to get us some videos. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. And I talked to... Um, I'm working on the witch situation. Which witch is which? Well, I talked to some ladies about the witches night out that we're we're probably gonna yeah. be out there. We're oh, gonna yeah. do some stuff out there. Yeah, and, we'll uh, take a dude if they'll let us. Because I was thinking the same thing. If you wanted to run to Kimswick, uh, what we'll do is we'll take the the uh, I got one of those awning things. Uh huh. Can take, take take this table awning. Yeah. Know anybody with a generator? Yes. <laughs> I know multiple people generators. We need a little. You know you're talking to here. We need a little small one. (laughs) Oh yeah, prepper. (laughs) Forgot about that. Of course. (laughs) But uh, but no, um, we're gonna get into that, and I'm working on talking to some, getting a hold of someone who actually thinks or who is a witch. I don't want to disrespect anyone. Talk to someone who's a witch and um, get that interview going. So big things coming up. Cool stuff. Big things coming up. All right, so I'm I'm gonna move along. I, I'm not trying to hog this whole thing. I just you got a lot more I, than I, I. You went down kind of a different direction. I, I kind of did. I kind of did. I like it. Though. Um, I like it because I really wanted to talk about this this David Weatherly guy because he, he's got so much information out there. Go get this guy's book. I mean, it's what was it called again? Let's it, give another shout it's out. It's called The Black Eyed Children, um, and it's by David Weatherly. Uh, Go get it, check it out, because this guy did some phenomenal research on this project. Um, so, after you know, he's got so many stories in there that it, it's crazy. But the one thing that I really wanted to touch on. <laughs> all right, that uh, part of the, all that right. Part of the episode. Oh, <laughs> it's that kind of party. <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, so these occurrences can be traced back to ancient China. Uh, Accounts of a ghostly black-eyed girl haunt local villages. Think about the ring. Yes, yep. Um, So this this ghostly girl um, 
she had long black hair, and they claimed that her eyes were solid black. Uh, she would terrorize uh, passersby that would drive past. Uh, you know, she would haunt these local villages and just terrorize them. And one of the things that that they thought, and this is a very interesting concept that I ran into, is they they claim that this this girl was the supernatural cause for some natural disasters. Mm. Think about that. Okay. Uh, they claim that she was an omen of ill fortune and a warning of disaster. What was the other one? Mothman. Mothman. You see? So, so okay, so, the story we told about the man and the wife. Were they predicting That's, that he was going to get c- cancer? Maybe. Maybe. Ah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, when I ran across that, I thought, man, that's a very interesting concept. That's a cool concept. concept. I mean, it, it really is. Um, but anyway, one of, the, one of the other things that he mentioned, and this just completely blew my mind, was he mentioned the Ufra Man at Gobeki Tepe, okay? Ooh, yeah, Gobeki Tepe. which is a statue with black eyes carved from solid obsidian. This statue is 13,500 years old. Damn. So there you go. Black eyes. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, it, is, is it related? Don't know. Don't know. That makes sense. Don't know. You know what I mean? I. But the, you know... The omens of ill fortune is, uh, was kind of a thing that really jumped out at me. Because well, yeah. it reminded me a lot of our Mothman episode. Uh-huh. And I mean, like like I was saying, you know, maybe these people... Did these two dudes in France wreck their car after these, you know? Yeah, you know, what happened? Don't know. Don't know. Something, yeah, you know. exactly. But, but yeah. That's kind of creepy. That one there, about the one in France was really really creepy just because the way they set up was you know what yeah I mean? well and they get creepier because i've got one later that made my hair stand up mm-hmm. so anyway um there is a a channel on youtube called fantastic daily uh check the, them out the creator of this channel was obsessed with bek's black eyed kids um he was he wanted to get to the very bottom of it. This guy lived in a house in the middle of nowhere. I mean, he lived, basically his house was completely secluded, surrounded by woods. It was a a trail to get, uh, to drive. You had to drive a trail to get out of this guy's house to get to Sounds civilization, awesome. okay? This guy lived out in the middle of nowhere. No, no, no neighbors. Nothing but woods and animals. Uh, Sounds like heaven. Yeah. So he he figured out while he was doing this that he could use, uh, well, what he did is he investigated the use of noise to attract these things. And what he figured out is is there is a certain, there is a certain noise, um, that is, uh, it, it's in like low level frequencies or whatever. You guys want some candy? Yeah. <laughs> hey kid, you want a balloon? I got sherbet ice cream. <laughs> Get your fat space ass over here. <laughs> um, anyway, this guy. So, so what this guy did is he set up an experiment, and. Dude, this video freaked me out. It was crazy. So this is video from his shit. So this was video from him. So what he did is he set up his laptop, which has got a camera on it. Mm -hmm. He set it up, and he he set it to where the camera on his laptop could see the door on the front of his house. Gotcha. And the, the front door on his house is all glass. So... It could see out onto the porch, but of course it's pitch black out there. Well, he had a uh, his his uh, porch light was a motion de- motion detecting porch light. 
So he set up this laptop to where it was recording out his door. And then he hooked up this little noise generator thing to generate this noise. So he showed video from the first night. Nothing happened. Second night, the porch light came on. No, it could have been a bug flyby. I've got a motion detecting porch light. Uh It it goes off and on all the time. Uh, The third night, you see the light come on and go off. Uh, The fourth night, though. So the fourth night... Shit gets real. Well, the light comes on, and as the light comes on, you slowly see this figure, this human form. You can see the face and everything comes up on his porch and is is basically looking through the window into his house. Fuck, yeah. Okay? What's creepy about it is, is he kind of went through the video. He was he had his video camera and he was showing you what was on his laptop uh-huh. and he was scrolling through the video. The time. This thing stood on his porch for an hour. <laughs> oh, shit. And never moved. Sweet. I mean, it would turn its head, but it stood there for an hour. Awesome. So, if that wasn't creepy enough, this guy, like two weeks later, he gets in his car to leave to go somewhere, and as he's driving out of his property, he sees something run across the road. He didn't know what it was. Could have been an animal. Could have been anything. Well, he decides he's going to stop his car and get out of the car and go check this out. So, he gets out of his, he grabs his camera, gets out of his car, and he's walking up and down the road. And he's looking around, and he doesn't see anything. Never sees anything until the next day when he starts going through the footage. The next day when he starts going through the footage, he catches in the woods a human face going through the trees. Now, I'm saying, this guy lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> Dude, there are no humans out there. Dude. And this guy catches a human face going through the woods. Like following him? It's just walking beside the road. Damn. And he didn't see it when he was out there, but he caught it on camera. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Dude, that's crazy. That'd be so crazy. Like, And that's not even the creepiest story I got to tell. <laughs> with the freaking... <laughs> With him being on the porch, like the on the porch, porch for dude, hours though. coming up, and dude, dude, you you got to see the video. It's I'm gonna watch. I'm it, definitely gonna watch. Yeah, it. it's it's on YouTube. It's it's pretty creepy. I'll probably end up watching that tonight when I get home. Actually, yeah, it, it's pretty creepy. That's freaking um, awesome, dude. But yeah, yeah, there's a ton of stories out there. Oh, a ton. But that um, one there is freaking cool. It is. That's my and, number two one that you've told. And like I said, that's not even the creepiest one I've got to tell. There's another one. So <laughs> I'm just full of fun information. Shit. Full of shit. Yeah, I am full of shit. Um, so you want me to go on? You got... I, I have on. a story. Come I want to no. join the party here. I have a story, but I didn't want to write as nearly as much as you did. So I just... <laughs> I, I, I went into some weird detail here. Like I had it on my phone. My um, next story is really short. All right, go ahead and tell your next one, and I want to get this Okay, one so my next up. story occurred in 2012. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to write down where it was. I may not have even told me where it was. But anyway, there was a gas station, and there was a, a, a gas station attendant that worked in this gas station. It was a 24-hour gas station, and it was on a dark, secluded road. You know, didn't get much traffic at night. During the day, they stayed pretty busy, but... At night, they didn't get hardly anything. Well, this uh, this attendant would keep the door locked at night, of course. Um, but uh, sometime around 3 o'clock in the morning, the power goes out in the gas station. Well, they have a couple generators there, but they only they're only hooked up to certain things. Like, there's a light out in the parking lot uh-huh. like by the gas pumps that will stay, stay on, lit. stay lit because of the generator. And there's a light, I think they said by the cash register, that will stay lit because of the generator. But the rest of the place is pitch black. So this guy's sitting there in the dark, and he sees these three kids come riding up on their bicycles. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Dude, 
What? <laughs> ain't, gonna, ain't gonna lie, I've done that many a times. Uh, well, yeah. But uh, usually there were some drugs involved. But uh, <laughs> oh, kill, for me, I'm sorry. I was killing not him. vampires. Not him. Not him. But anyway, these uh, these three kids come riding up. They they kind of just come out of the darkness. Yeah. You know, riding up on their bikes, and uh, they walk up to the door, and he walks up to the door. You know, because he's like, you know, I want to make sure these kids are okay. So he opens the door and he said, "Hey, are you guys okay? Are you lost? You need help or whatever." And uh, these kids wanted to use his phone. They're like, oh, we just need to use a phone. So he was like, okay. So he pulls his cell phone out of his pocket and goes to hand it to them. And they're like, no, we want to use that phone there. And they point at the phone by the cash register. They want inside the building. Yeah. And he was like, what? what? And that's when they looked up and their eyes were pitch black. Yeah, dude. And he was like, whoa. <laughs> he immediately backed in the door, <laughs> shut the door, and locked it. And he said they stayed out there for a little while, but eventually they just rode off. Crazy. And disappeared into the darkness. So, yeah. That's why you always carry, folks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I, gotta I don't know s- if you could kill one of these things. Nah, but I feel better being able to put about <laughs> 17 rounds. I feel better through. shooting a little bastard, though. So, uh, yeah. Uh, there are a bunch of cool stories. I got this one. This one's off of um, this little website called The Lineup. Um, this is off of theirs. Uh, and this one is called The Boy in the Trunk. Um, I've been there. Yeah. Um, on March 12, 2008, a 12-year-old boy had a bone-chilling experience in, in an outlet parking lot. While waiting in his mother's truck... For his mother to finish, you know, getting her hair cut and stuff, he saw a boy walking across the parking lot. Thinking it was a friend from school, the boy banged on the window until the other boy turned. Realizing it was not his friend, the boy in the truck watched in confusion as the strange kid walked up and started to stare at him through the window. Uh, the boy caught one glance at the other boy's solid black eyes and knew he was staring into the face of evil. You must let me in, the black-eyed boy demanded. Panicked, the boy in the car crouched under the the glove compartment. After several minutes, the black-eyed boy, who had been staring at him the whole time, so he's sitting there, and this kid's staring at him the whole fucking time, just looking at him in the window, just Mm -hmm. not saying nothing. Black eyes just looking at you. So after several minutes, the black-eyed boy finally disappeared, when a mother's boy returned to the truck, she informed her son that the black-eyed child had come into the salon demanding the uh, keys to her vehicle. Thankfully, the boy didn't let her get let him get in. Mm. So, this thing had already been inside with this kid's mom trying to get her keys oh. in the salon. Yeah. See, my thing with these stories are is that what's weird to me is that how much some of these they say they talk to them. Right. And some of them, they don't. Some of them don't say nothing. Right. Or they say, can we come in? Can we come in? They say the same thing over and over. They're constantly trying to get into, you know, an area with you. I think they want to invade your body. Yeah, see, and it's like... Because your body's a wonderland. Body's a (laughs) wonderland! Wow! (sighs) Yeah, son. We're just full of jokes tonight. Son, I'm on it. <laughs> well, you know, and that goes along with, you know, a lot of people, they think of these as a demonic entity. You know what I mean? It's not like, uh, it's not like they're, it's not like they're a, uh, I don't know, malevolent spirit, malevolent spirit. It's mm-hmm. they're like a demonic enemy, entity. Yeah. Like, there's something coming to get you one you, way or another, yeah. you know, whether they get you that night or you die of skin cancer or some kind of cancer. Right, matter. right. Well, and that's that's one thing we were talking about earlier is, like, we don't know what happens after the fact on a lot of these stories. Most people don't let them in. Exactly. You know, but it, it's the stories of where they've let them in, what happens next. Yeah, and, you know... Like you said, that whole concept that you brought up was really good, though, because it's like, well, are these things causing this, or are they 
a warning, warning to you because yeah. they don't they don't they don't initially. What did, the, what did they What did they call Mothman, the Harbinger of Death, or something? Of Doom, or something or, like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's a great concept, guys. I mean, what do you think? You know, leave some that's, comments. That's below. very that's interesting. Not... Yeah, for sure. Uh, I know this. It would be super freaking creepy. I I live in the country. I drive down a lot of back roads, mm. man. I've been on a lot of back roads my whole mm. life. If I was parked on a side road or something, just chilling out, and something came to my window and was just staring at me through my window, dude. I'm going to tell you right now, I've seen too many damn horror movies. I'm not going to park on the side of the road. <laughs> See, I do, but I also have like... Yeah, you got to adjust 15, your package, though. Yeah. I got... I got... I got I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I'm not too worried about it. But if you have no control in the situation, what do you do? I can have all the guns I want. I can know how to defend myself. Right. But, but if, if you, you can't, can't move, get to them. What do you do? And that's what's super. Yeah. Like I said a million times, guys, I'm all about the freaking having control of the situation. And if you have no control, that's what's super creepy. Like when we talked about aliens, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, whether you believe, whether you believe in them or not, we don't care. We're not judging. We don't care. I kind of do. Yeah. Whether or not there are beings that come down here, I don't know. But if you have no control, he's just looking for the probe. Yes, but I can have that. P- Never mind. <laughs> uh, if you have no control of the situation, yeah. that's. Uh, you know, there was another. There was another theory going around that these things are some sort of combination of uh, demonic, ghostly, possibly alien being, and the story with the woman. And her husband, where the kids left the house and got in the black car with the men in men black. Men in black, yo. Oh, I was like, oh, uh, maybe. What maybe. was that movie? Uh, uh, was it Knowing with Nicolas oh, Cage? Nicolas Cage, yeah. Weren't the beans like kind of white and like uh-huh. pale white with like weird facial features? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. you know. It's all. I, it, it's this is why we like having these conversations, guys. Yeah, and they also had the, those have showed up in a lot of shows and movies, um, like in that show that I absolutely love that's been gone for years now. It was called The Fringe, and they had uh, they called them the Observers. Yeah. And uh, yeah. well, there you go. You know, that's and that's why we like having these conversations, yeah. guys. Uh, see, the, these are the things we think about at night when the electricity is out and there's nothing to do. Yeah. But, that's what I think about when yeah. the lights are out. <laughs> I'm scared. Probing. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. No, but guys, anyway. that's why we yeah. love having these conversations because yeah. it leads you down these roads to where mm-hmm. you have these conversations about things that you think. It makes you think. Yeah. It, it, it well, really you, gets your mind. You get something that you think is not connected anywhere, and there there's a connection somewhere, you know? So is that like the six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon or something like? I don't Kevin know. Bacon. But anyway, guys, yeah, that's the story of the Black Eyed Children. Four um, kids. I've got one more kind of go? long story that I want to tell. You want to go with it? Um, I, I am going to go with it because it's probably the creepiest thing you've ever heard. You may not think so, but I, I, I it's not the creepiest. Thing I'm you've ready ever for heard. it. I'm it's not the creepiest thing you've ever heard, but it was one of the creepier stories that I ran across. I'm ready. For so it. Let's rock it. this happened in 2010, uh, in uh, Ohio mm. of all places. Uh, this was uh, this. The title of the story was called "The 5 A.M. Encounter." Um, it was about a guy that worked at a uh, data entry center or whatever. He was like a night watchman. Um, basically, his job was just to watch the place at night. He had a, he sat in a room most of the time with monitors. Uh-huh. And there's surveillance cameras all around the building. So he decided that he was going to go out and have a smoke. So he's standing outside the building, and he's smoking, and he looks across the road, and he sees these two teenage boys standing across the street. And, you know, he didn't really think too much about it, but they were just standing there staring at him. So he kind of put his cigarette out and went back in the building, you know, locked the door. And uh, 
he uh, he went back up to his room with the all the surveillance monitors and stuff, and these boys ended up walking across the road coming towards the building, and he he watched them on the surveillance camera, and they walk right up to the surveillance camera, and they're just standing there staring into the camera. <laughs> and he said it felt like they were looking right at him, yeah, like yeah. like they could see me. Oh, dude! Um, so he so he hits the speaker button, and he was like, uh, you know, what do you, what do you guys want? You know, are you guys okay or something like that? Got no response for him whatsoever. <laughs> they just stood there staring at the camera, and uh, you know, so he was like, he was like, man, what what the hell, you know? So he called out to him again on the speaker. Are you guys okay? Do you need some help? Blah, blah, blah. No response from him. <laughs> so he's like, all right. So he goes out of his room, goes down to the door, because the surveillance camera is right outside the door of the building. Oh, building. Yeah, yeah. So he goes out, and as he gets to the door, the door actually has a, a glass on it, but... You can see out, but nobody can see in. Gotcha. It's like a one-way mirror or whatever. And he noticed as he got to the glass, he could see these kids. And their eyes were solid black. And he was like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, he uh, this all happened in about a 10-minute period of time. And these boys just stood there staring at this camera so uh, you know he asked them what they wanted uh through the speaker and got no response uh, so he decided to open the door and as he opened the door one of the boys said because his thought was he was going to open the door and say look if you don't go away i'm gonna call the police yeah yeah as he opened the door, one of the boys said, there's no need for that. We simply want to use the phone. So it's they like they knew, knew what, he was say. what he was gonna say. So he just stood there dumbfounded and, and then they said, can you let us in? And so he was like, no, I can't let you in. So he threatened to call the police and then he, he shut the door and the, he locked the door. So he went back up to the monitor room, and when he got up to the monitor room, he noticed that there was only one boy still standing at the door. Oh, shit. But it was still staring Through at the, the camera. camera. Holy shit. Like it could see him. Not moving, just staring straight at that camera. So he noticed on the other surveillance cameras, the two other boys had headed around the back side of the building and were standing outside the back door staring at the surveillance camera. What the fuck? So he's got one kid out front, two kids out back, and they're just, he said they all look the same. They had that same dead look in their eyes and they're staring straight at the camera. Dude. So, he, uh, he finally, he called the police. And before the police got there, he lost sight of these kids. They had gotten into an area where there was no surveillance camera, uh -huh. so he couldn't find them. So the police got there at 6 a.m. So this all started at 5 o'clock. So we're talking in an hour's time. These kids are just staring at this guy through this surveillance camera. So the police get there. The boys were completely gone. No trace of them ever being there. Nobody knows what happened. That's some freaky shit. Fuck yeah, dude. Freaky. Freaky. Well, I mean, you know, like you said, it's it's like they're looking at you. Like yeah. they know you're there and you're they're they looking are. at you. They are. And they were in his head, evidently, you know. They yeah. knew he was gonna say the stuff about the cops. So I'm gonna end this with a little I'm gonna read you a little thing. Of of course you guys know what a big fan of Jim Harold I am. So this was on Jim Harold's uh Jim Harold's website. Yeah. There oh, were, I think I read this. He, there was a lot of stories on there, but what they talked about was, at the end of it, they talked about this Brian Bethel guy. And uh, so I, I'm just going to read this to you guys. So 
Excuse me. Bear I'm not the best reader in the world. Bear so, with them. No matter the case, while these beings seem pure in their dark intentions, Brian Bethel would calm my own nerves with these words of warning. They are dangerous entities, to be sure, but we have something they don't, something they desperately want. I believe it is the light within us, the human soul that they crave. Whether they wish to corrupt corrupt it or consume it, I don't know, but it is that very thing they desire and gives us the edge over them. It is something they apparently can't just take. Permission has to be given, and in that, it is our strength. It's good advice in general, but beware who you allow into your life, and don't open doors for just anyone. Be dis discerning, be aware, and most important, be safe. Like I said, you know, we talked about that before about the human pow willpower, mm -hmm. the power of the human, yeah. and that's I believe highly in that, you know, and that goes to show what yeah, we're talking yeah. about, yeah. and maybe that's why I haven't seen something like that. Maybe they sense we can probably get over on somebody. Ah, uh, maybe. You know maybe. what I mean? And that's, maybe they prey on the weak. Exactly, the weak willed. Yeah. And that's one thing. Like I, that's one thing I'm glad about <laughs> my son. My sons, they have they're strong willed. Yeah. They butt I'll butt heads with you know, they're they're young but they got that that will. Yeah. You know, they're they're gonna do do what they're gonna do to an extent that I let them. But, you know, they have that in their head. It's a good thing to have. Strong yeah. willpower, guys. And you sure. you you can do that. Even if you don't have it now, you can do it. Just you can it. develop it. You can develop that, man. Yeah. You guys gotta have that you guys just got to have that belief in yourself. Not me. I'm a big scaredy cat. So. Nah, just believe in yourself, and you guys can do anything, man. I'm not trying to get gushy on you, but, you know, like, that's like with me and JT here. You know, we just one day said, we want to do this. Yeah. And, and here we are. We did it. Yeah. You can do anything you want to. Yeah. You just got to put your mind to it and do it. Don't be afraid. You guys can do anything. You know what I mean? And... uh on that, I don't want Gerald to start crying. <laughs> oh, I like shed a tear. <sighs> but anyways, guys, not to get anyway. mushy on you. We've rambled on about the black kids for a while. I hope you guys learned some stuff. I know I did when I was doing some of this research. Black-eyed kids, guys. Um, you said black kids. <laughs> <laughs> black-eyed children Excuse or kids. Excuse me. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my God. Anyway, guys, ask. it's that time. We've been. Yeah, yeah. We've been anyway, here guys, while. that's it, man. Um, we want to have some conversations with you. Leave us some comments below. Let us know what you think. Um, give us some suggestions on what you want to hear maybe next yeah. week or yeah. something. Oh, oh, we forgot the big, the big uh, news. So, you know, we signed up with Anchor. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A couple uh, last week. So, as of Friday, we have been launched on eight different podcasts. Uh, uh, sites. Sites. Uh, we are now on Spotify, uh, okay, uh, Breaker, uh, Radio message. Public, uh, Google Podcast. Uh, yeah. Uh, Apple. Well, Apple's kind of. Yeah, kind of. Google, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, and Radio Public. Yes. Yeah. So if you guys use some of those for your, you know, your podcast listening enjoyment, you can now find us on there. Yep. Super easy to find. Just type in the Horror Chronicles podcast and we'll pop up somewhere. Yep. Spotify is really weird. I pulled it up on my phone and like you type in the Horror Chronicles podcast and I don't, I'm not a Spotify guy, so I don't really know how it works, but it's really weird. It's like got our, it, it, it'll show like our episode and then something totally different and then like down the yeah, line. Yeah, it's got some Another episode. It's like, it's like I think what it's trying to do is like, uh, shuffle yeah you know yeah. Get, podcasts put stuff or out whatever there. you know but, but you guys can always find us on YouTube guys yeah come yeah, on over for sure subscribe hit the like button hit that bell the notification bell come uh, see us on video and uh, leave us some comments let us know what you want to hear if you yeah. want to get on the show we're hit willing we're willing up. man we will get a hold of you we're willing to travel at this point yeah you know we're, we're, we'll uh, we'll set it up no matter yeah, what guys we'll do it and um we're on Twitter. 
I'm still not good on the whole Twitter thing, guys. We're working on that. We uh, <laughs> we're, yeah, I am Twitter is super easy to find. It's twitter.com forward slash the horror cron. There you go. And um, if you want to get a, get to us on Anchor, uh, it's anchor.fm forward slash the horror chronicles. Yep. Um, and um, super easy to find. Facebook, of course, guys. Horror Chronicles podcast. Give us, send us an email. If you have a story that you want to tell, um, send us send it to us. If you want to tell it and you kind of want to get on a show, maybe do some stuff, we'll work that out. Yeah. If you want us to read it for you, we will gladly do that for you. And we can leave your name out or put it in, yeah. whatever you like. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we've got the ability now. We can do, uh, we can record phone calls. Yeah, so guys, so, um, hit us up. So if you want to want to do something like that, get a hold of us. We'll exchange some numbers and... Do swap some, some spit do some talking oh, do some talking okay we love you guys thanks for supporting us man we're pushing out there we're going to be doing a lot of big things a lot of more important more bigger things coming to the to the show more better Mo better um that's it guys so we love you thank you keep supporting us tell your friends and family and until next time keep it creepy